let's have a look at our first question today. It deals with trigonometry. It says an artist or landscape artist plans to plant flowers within, this is important, two concentric circles. Now remember, two concentric circles mean that these two circles, I hope it's at point Q, I put the point there, but we'll see now, share the same center. Around a vertical light pole, now the light pole is here at PQ, they tell us it's vertical, so they're accentuating the fact that those two are right angles. R is a point on the inner circle over there. The inner circle obviously is the smaller circle. They say R is a point on that circle. And S, let's go down a tad bit here, S is a point on the outer circle. Now you can see the shaded part here, folks. This is where your garden is going to be located. RS is a pipe from R to S. They've got a pipe that um, does, is an irrigation system for this garden. So the radius of the inner circle, they tell us, that radius is R, and the radius of the outer circle is this QS. The angle of elevation of S, or of P, from S, is 30 degrees. Now remember, if you elevate, you're going up. Okay, an elevator takes you up. If you're depressed, you're down. Okay, so an angle of depression faces down, an angle of elevation faces up. That's 30 degrees. Now immediately, we, say, we know this is 90, so immediately let's say we have that definitely guaranteed as 60 degrees. Okay, so now ROS is 2x, RQS is 2x. So this angle here, that 2x has got to do with the angle, and PQ, which is this vertical pole, is root 3 multiplied by R. Okay, now let's see what is the first question they're going to ask us. They say, show that QS is equal to 3R. Now, folks, let's go back and let's see where QS is. If I look at my diagram, QS is this radius here at the bottom, the radius of the bigger circle. That belongs to a right-angled triangle, PQS. Okay, so let's go back. That's going to be quick. There's no fancy stuff that they want us to do there. So I've got my right-angled triangle. I'm just going to draw it over here for you to remind you. There is P, there's Q, this is 3R that we want to show. Okay, so it's not given to us as 3R, it is show that it's 3R. Okay, and then the next information that we have here is that PQ is root 3R, that this is 60, and that this is 30. So I'm spoiled for choice. I can go to either 30 or 60. I know both of those. They're special angles. So I can, I've got the angle. I've got a side. I need another side. So let's see how we will do this. If I go for point S, which is, by the way, over there, this is the side we want, I can say this lies opposite it, and then I'm working, and this is adjacent um, to the 30. Okay, so opposite over adjacent is the tan of that 30 degrees. Is the opposite root 3 over R over adjacent, which is QS. Now, look at that. That's for three marks. Okay, so all I need to do is get QS by itself, take the tan of 30, and I've got, hopefully, got my 3R. Let's do that. QS goes across, I multiply across, and I divide the tan to the other side. So root 3R divided by the tan of 30 is then the root of 3 times the R, that length, divided by the tan of 30. And if you can remember your special angles, this is 30, 
There's your right angle, that is 60. This is 1, 2, root 3. The tan of 30 is opposite over adjacent, so you have a 1 over root 3 here, which then goes to root 3 times root 3 times r. I just reciprocate the denominator and multiply, so I have 3r. Three easy and quick marks for you, just using a right angle to triangle the information that they gave us. The next question says, determine in terms of r the area of the flower garden. Now, we've got the information. Remember, the, the, there's an outer circle and then there's an inner circle. There's Q. Sorry, my circles aren't that concentric or as concentric as what I would love them to be. The outer radius is what we just found. We found that to be 3R. The inner radius they gave us from there to there, and they told us that is small r. So the area of the garden is going to be the area of the outer circle, pi, now, I would advise that you put a bracket when you substitute 3r so that you remember to square the 3 and the r. A lot of you just put 3r and then the squared, and then you only square the r. So it's the outer circle minus the area of the inner circle, which is just pi r squared. 3 squared is 9, so we get 9 pi r squared minus pi r squared, and that gives us 8 pi r squared. For two marks, that is the area of the garden that we're trying to, uh, to build here. Okay, let's see what the next question is asking. It's saying, show that r s takes on that value. Now, I would want to remind us where r s lies, so let's go back. Here is r s. What do I have? I have the angle 2x, I have this side as 3r, and I have that side given as r, I want rs. Now remember what's happening. This is what's happening. You've got, you're coming in from this side here, okay? This points to a side, that points to that side in the triangle, and this finger points to the angle the devil's fork. Okay, so if you have something like that, it's the cosine law. Remember that. So here, if I go in from here, I've got 3r, I've got r, and I've got the angle, the cos of 2x. So before I forget about what I've got, let's go and quickly put that triangle down here. We've got r. Oh, that was an awful r. We've got r, then we have 3r, and then we have 2x in the middle, and there's the pipe. Now the pipe is rs, and that is what we're trying to find. And this is the angle q. You can see perfectly, folks, if you want this, it's perfectly positioned for the cos law. So rs squared is small r squared plus, now remember in a bracket, 3r all squared minus 2 times small r times the 3r times the cosine of 2x. Now something else that made me think that this is possibly the cosine law is the fact that the answer has a square root over it. If you apply the area rule, there's no square root. If you apply the sine law, there's no square root. So the only one of the three laws that you have that has or that can generate the square root is either Pythagoras, if there's a right angle, or the cos law. So let's have a look. If I add, I get again 9 plus 1 is 10r squared minus the 6r squared cos 2x. And the only thing I can remove that's common there that uh, will make me get to the answer is my r squared. So I've got 10 
minus 6 cos of 2x as rs squared. And folks, without writing this thing again, if I take the square, now let me write it again. If I take the square root, square root of r squared is r times the root of 10 minus 6 cos 2x. Okay, the last bit. Now, this bit is, they're actually asking us for the actual length of rs. They tell us what x is. So we want 2x. 2x is twice 56. And that is 112 degrees. And they tell us r is 10. So rs is going to be the 10 meters which they gave us for r multiplied by 10 minus 6 times the cosine of 1, 1, 2. Now, folks, if you use your calculator to find this, you must make sure that your calculator is on degrees. So, please, I'm going to NB this. Degrees. Okay, so that is what we have the cosine of 1, 1, 2. We times that with minus 6. We add 10. We take the square root of that answer and we times that with 10 and it gives us the 34,9966. They didn't tell us correct to so many decimals, so I will suggest just look at the beginning of your paper. If they say leave all answers correct to two decimals, that you use two decimals, okay? Either one or two. They tell you at the beginning. They usually say, unless otherwise stated, leave all answers as. So this is, the length of that pipe will be 35, what is it, meters? Yes, to the nearest integer. In this case, if they said to two decimals, you would take it to 34, comma what? No, you will take it to 35, comma naught, naught. So if they said two decimals, let's just go there. If they say they want the answer correct to two decimals, then give it as 35, comma naught, naught meters because they asked for two decimals.